Hey guys, my name is Wes Judd. I am the online fitness editor here at Outside Magazine. And today we're talking about fitness data, maybe even your fitness data, and the surprising ways it can and is being used. First up, to keep college students on their feet. Oklahoma's Oral Roberts University requires all incoming students to wear Fitbits and essentially tracks and grades their physical activity via what they call aerobic points. While the school has always required some degree of physical fitness in the curriculum, tracking it via this big brother approach is pretty unprecedented and opens a lot of concerning doors. I mean, the school is a Christian university and has a strict rule of no premarital sex. So 24-7 data on these students' activities could illuminate whether or not they are actually following that rule. Last February, a group of mountain bikers were banned from Brine Preserve in the Bay Area after their Strava data revealed they were flying at speeds at over 20 miles per hour on super narrow trails that were also shared with hikers and horseback riders. As our writer Andrew Tillon says in a piece on the site, these guys couldn't even mount a defense. Their crimes were chiseled in data. In 2014, Strava launched what they call Strava Metro, which essentially assembles and sells big bundles of data to urban planning groups and departments of transportation so they can use that information to better design infrastructure for pedestrians and riders. You know how they used to collect this type of data? They'd sit volunteers on a street corner and have them count all the riders and runners that went by. Not too long ago, the life insurance giant John Hancock realized that there's a pretty clear relationship between personal health and insurance prices. So in 2015, they started giving some of their customers Fitbits who could then earn vitality points. The idea is the more of these points you earn, the more your annual premiums go down. But this has raised some pretty interesting questions. I mean, what if you fail to maintain your fitness minimums? Should you really be forced to pay more because you don't take X number of steps in a month? Plus, what is John Hancock and its affiliate companies going to do with this massive amount of fitness data that it collects from its policyholders? Last year, $250,000 worth of bikes were stolen in central England. $70,000 worth of full suspension mountain bikes were stolen in Albuquerque earlier this year. Dozens of bikes stolen from homes around Austin. What do these all have in common? It was thought that the thieves used the riders' GPS data to track them back to their homes or businesses. But fitness apps like Strava have realized this is an issue, and they started offering better privacy options, like obscuring riders' beginning and end points. So your fitness data is really like any other data you generate. That is to say, it's probably gonna remain safe, but it can be used in pretty unexpected ways. We track our runs, our rides, our climbs, and our walks with the goal of improving our health or beating our PR. But it's important to keep in mind that at the end of the day, this data is really anything but yours and yours alone.